Oh. oh well, no use crying over spilled pudding. Hey, you guys, your banana huh? pizza is great. Everybody's going crazy over it. Huh? Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week's episode is brought to you by Verve Premium, spelled V-R-V, a streaming service that not only gives you full access to Crunchyroll, where you can watch shows like Attack on Titan and Food Wars, but a ton of other channels like Rooster Teeth, Funimation, and Nick Splat, where you can see the very episode of Doug in Question, Season 1, Episode 11, to be exact. More on that later, because for now, we're going to try out Doug and Patty's Banana Pudding Pizza, which, as you may have guessed, involves bananas, something to which I am quite allergic. So we'll be bringing in my buddy Sawyer later on as a taste tester. Before that, however, we need to make banana pudding. We're going to start with three tablespoons of cornstarch, three quarters of one cup of plain white sugar. We're going to whisk that together to make sure that it's well combined before adding two and one half cups of whole milk. Again, whisking to combine, making sure that it's well combined. And I hope you used a glass or metal bowl because we're turning this guy into a double boiler. Bring it over to an awaiting simmering pot of water upon which we're going to willingly whisk this saccharine syrup until it becomes steaming hot, at which point we're going to grab a quarter cup of it and slowly stream it into three beaten egg yolks, whisking the whole time so as to temper said egg yolks that we're going to bring back to our steaming milky mixture and slowly stream in again in an effort to not cook the eggs. Then after about 10 minutes of diligent whisking over a hot stove, we're going to realize that the double boiler setup was wholly unnecessary in the first place, and we're just going to dump out the hot water and dump the egg mixture into the pot itself, heating over medium-low heat and stirring constantly until it coats the back of a spoon. Once it's nice and thick, take it off the heat, admire the viscosity that you've achieved, and we're going to whisk in about a tablespoon of butter and maybe two teaspoons of vanilla paste, because banana pudding is really just vanilla pudding with bananas in it. So we're going to set this guy aside to cool off before we put it in the fridge. Once he stops steaming, after about 30 minutes, we're going to press down a layer of plastic wrap directly onto the surface of the pudding so as to not form a skin. In, unless you're George Costanza and you're into that sort of thing. Now it's time to make some pizza. We've made pizza many, many times on this show, so if you want a solid dough recipe, click the link in the upper right-hand corner right now. 24 hours later, once you've got your dough fridge fermented and stretched out to your desired specifications, we are placing it on a well-floured pizza peel, hitting it with tomato sauce, mozzarella, and pepperoni, as is visible in the show. Then we're placing it directly onto a pizza stone that has been preheating in a 500-degree Fahrenheit oven for one hour. Now it's time to make our pudding into banana pudding. It's not entirely set, but I don't really have super high hopes for this recipe. Out comes the pizza from the oven, and in comes my taste tester, Sawyer. So, uh, what do you think? This looks pretty good, right? It looks great. It's one of the better looking pizzas I've ever made. It tastes like a like a a child's lunch got mixed up, you know. Like you opened your lunch and you're like, oh, mom didn't wrap it yeah. right. <laughs> mom didn't wrap it right. Okay, so biggest twist ending yet of 2018, banana pudding on pizza, not very good. But what about the inexplicably popular Swedish pizza, which starts with slices of bananas, then ups the ante a little bit with a handful of peanuts for some reason, then takes a sharp turn back toward normality with ham, and then just adds to the craziness with a healthy sprinkle of curry powder. No, I did not just make this up. This is a Swedish favorite. Out of the oven it comes, and I have high hopes that this is going to redeem the name of banana on pizza. Let's check in with Sawyer. Yeah, unfortunately, this is a perfect pizza ruined by these random things. <laughs> I believe it. Okay, so we're over for 2. We got some very good pizza dough here, courtesy of America's Test Kitchen, but even that cannot save this pizza from our jazz hands of death. You can just feel the disapproval. I've got one last shot to combine bananas with pizza, and that is with plantains. Making a faux pizza crust out of the fibrous fruit, blending it together with a quarter teaspoon of baking soda and a few sprinkles of some Italian seasonings like onion powder, garlic powder, and oregano. We're also gonna add about two tablespoons of olive oil and a good pinch of salt. Then we're gonna blend the whole thing together using a food processor attachment, scraping down the sides of the bowl as necessary, and re-blending until a smooth paste 
is achieved, one that we're going to turn out onto an ultra non-stick surface like a silpat, patting and forming into a shape reminiscent of a pizza, if you can even remember what one looks, smells, feels, tastes, or sounds like after making such a bastardized version, which to my dismay turned out pretty green and gross. So we're going to try it again with some slightly more ripe plantains, repeating the exact same method in an actual food processor this time, forming a smooth, luxurious paste that we are going to spoon onto a piece of parchment paper because our silpat is in the sink. Bake these guys at 375 for about 12 minutes until they come out golden brown and almost kind of bread-like. Pull them out onto a cooling rack and immediately curse yourself for using parchment paper because they're stuck. But then once you've got one free, put it onto a well-oiled baking sheet before topping with the usual pizza suspects. Tomato sauce, fresh mozzarella, and a bit of grated Parmesan cheese. Into the oven it goes for an additional 10 minutes until it kind of sort of looks like a pizza if you've been starving yourself of carbs for 30 days and you will do absolutely anything to any kind of tropical fruit to get your fix. While this might not look super great, it was actually, according to Sawyer, pretty tasty and is quite simply the closest we're going to get to combining bananas with pizza. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Do 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 do